G'day. Cheers. In the garage. Another mystery box. But before we get to that, <laughs> this is Mountain Culture's uh, Dolly, the homebrew competition. It's really nice. It's just sort of hit its straps. And I think <laughs> it's a bit early. The competition uh, entry or judging is until the start of October. Uh, I think I've brewed it a bit early and I actually left it pretty late. I didn't sort of think though they said to brew it by the 25th. I think I brewed it on the 23rd or the 24th uh, last month and it was you know, virtually fermented in a week and dry hopped and cold crashed um, 10 or 11 days. And it's really nice. It was a bit rough at first, as usual. You expect a lot of hops in it, but it settled down real quick. It's been in the keg about a week, and uh, it's really nice now. Uh, it might not last to the competition due to me drinking it all, <laughs> or uh, I just hope you know the hop aromas and everything hold up for that long. Anyway, onto this box. Oh, the video will be out later. I've been waiting to do a tasting. I uh, won't be happy tonight. I'll probably do a tasting next week and get the video out. So I was sent this box. It was out of the blue. Oh, they did warn me they were sending me something. And they said it was a Benchy. And they said a few things. And I didn't really even know. I know it's some sort of thing that sits on a bench <laughs> for cooling beer. But I wasn't aware that there was... They have three or four different versions. Uh, some are for... You can hook up your mains water. Uh, and have it sitting on a bench and it'll carb it and serve it cold, you know, and chill it without it, the water being in the fridge or anything and carbonate it and you're, you're pouring it directly out of the unit. I don't remember which this one is. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is the beer one, just beer, not for carbonating water. And uh, there's a few different models too. I think there's a 12 volt model and maybe a 240 volt. Anyway, I'll stop guessing <laughs> and we'll get it open and we'll have a look. So big thanks to Kegland. Uh, this wasn't asked for, and it's in no way a paid review or anything like that. Uh, it's just one of my normal reviews. It's just they donated it to the cause. Wow, they're a lot larger than I thought. <laughs> now we're gonna get this out. I didn't realize it's one of them boxes. So it is, it's a stainless steel drip tray and a tap spinner. That is good. And you can never have enough of these. This is a nice looking unit. This is the stainless version, obviously. You can get uh, what I'm assuming is maybe a plastic or black steel version. When I say black steel, it might be coated. Don't quote me on that. This. This is something that, you know, if you had a bar, you wouldn't mind showing off. You know, some of these sort of bench top units can be a bit ugly. This is, looks very nice. Sturdy, solid. This runs on 240 volt. I can see at the back here. And this is the Chiller G20. I don't think that's the model number though. The model number is KL18203. I'm not sure I mentioned earlier it runs on glycol. So you do have a glycol tank in here, but that's what allows you to chill the beer down quick. I'll give you a closer look at all this in a minute. I'm just having a bit of a sticky peek because I had never seen one before. All right, that's obviously the power cord, 240 volts. And this, I think is a sight gauge. I won't attach it properly now. Oh, but it really would be just as simple as pushing that on there. Well, that's funny. I wasn't going to attach it now. But, of course, with these duo-tight connections, all you have to do is push it on. And I've locked it on. And there's actually a lock nut in there at the moment, or a lock, like a circlip lock clip. I'll leave it in there for now. Otherwise, you'll be looking at my back. I might as well push that one on too. And you probably should take out those circlips to make sure it's properly tight while you do it up. But that's on there. And that'll be a sight glass. And 
it's probably good they made it out of that because if it was glass and you had this on a bar or in a festival situation or something, yeah, much safer than a piece of glass or a, even a piece of perspex that could crack or something. I'll show you close up later. So there's a temperature controller, power, power switch, two beer line ins, and you attach the taps here. They did actually send another box, which I haven't looked in yet either. I'll go and grab it. So I'm assuming this is all the other bits and pieces you need. <laughs> it's so shiny, the camera auto adjusted and put me in the dark. Not much to see there. That's your glycol. You'd water that down to a certain mix before you put it inside. We'll have a look at that later too. It also came with a roller line, which is over there, beer line. And yeah, all your disconnects uh, and some nice shiny tap handles, stainless steel ones. I'll get this together and we'll have a look at it. I'll note while we're here that they are flow control taps. And the reason they'll give you flow control taps is because you could probably have varying lengths of line and festivals and thing. Also, you might use a uh, different gas. You might be using beer gas and you have to up the pressure or something like that. Uh, so it would be good to have the flow control option there. I would guess the other reason is too, if your beer is warm, if you haven't got it in some sort of, uh, even a little bit of cooling, then it's going to take a higher pressure to keep it carbonated. Uh, so you might be pushing it at higher pressure and that's where you Flow control taps will really help. So that'll do for this part of the video. I've got two fermenters here with what's left of two brews I've done recently. And I've let them come up to room temperature after cold crash and they've been sitting out here for a couple of days. So they're at room temperature now, which has got to be around 25 degrees. It's quite warm out here tonight uh, for winter in Melbourne. And I thought I'd rather use those than pull out one of my kegs out of my kegerator and bring it out here and let it warm up. I want my kegs in there, especially because it's a competition beer. So I'm not going to bring that out here and let it warm up uh, overnight and stuff. That's staying in the fridge for the competition. But I have got these two fermenters here to use, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'll set it up, get it running, uh, and then we'll pump some warm beer through and see if it comes out cold. Cheers. For such a great looking unit, it's a little bit unfortunate I got one with a bit of a dodgy world clean up there on the corner. Of course, it's not going to affect the operation or anything. Sometimes when you get these flow control taps, there's a little shuttle that sits in the end there and it can just sort of fall out. If you need to put it back in, you put it back in like that with the cage sticking up. They sent a few springs for the taps. The spring's going pretty easy. You make sure the little end sort of sits on the end of the shuttle there and the bigger end goes in first. So you just place the spring in there. Make sure it's sitting in there correctly and screw it onto the unit. It's not right. The nut on here was loose. This one over here too. That one's a bit loose too. That could be tightened up as well. And there's the inside. I guess that bit of tape, that bit of tape. It's just to keep that lid in place for the reservoir. Today for this test, I'm just filling it up with water. You can run with water, but you can't set the reservoir to under two degrees, just in case it freezes. If you're using the glycol, you can go much lower. You can see there the water on the sight glass. I lost count of how many jugs I put in. 
I must have been around 12 to 15 litres. I'll leave that for a while to cool down. If you haven't used a STC before, I do have a full video on usage. When that cooling light is flashing, that's a time delay for the cooling cycle to start to protect fridges, compressors and things. So it doesn't cool straight away. It's usually um, two minutes or something like that. I think you can set a setting in here for it, but it's usually about two minutes, three minutes. And when that light stops flashing, it'll start the cooling cycle. To check what temperature it's set at, that's your power button, you hold it down to turn it on and off. That's your set button, you hold that down to turn it on and off. You can tell when you're in set mode because there'll be another light underneath set. To check what temperature it's set to, you press the up arrow there, and this is set to 2 degrees. If it wasn't set to 2 degrees, I needed it to, but if it was set at something else, and I wanted to change it, I'd hold down the set button, Now we're in set mode, F1, hold down the set button again because F1 is the temperature and then we can change the temperature. Once we've changed it to what we want, just hold, press the power button and that sets it. But as you can see, as soon as that light stopped flashing, as, as I was talking, the cooling mode switched in and the fridge is on inside and it is cooling. So we'll come back in a little while, once it's cooled down, and we'll give it a shot. As I said, I do have a full video on programming these if you need to watch it. They're really good units. I know everyone's on the Inkbird train these days, but these units, if you get the good ones, are way more reliable and will last you years and years and years if you set them up correctly. I've come back after an hour, got carried away with something. It's down to two degrees, I'm not sure how long that took. So I have my fermenter here. I've got, I don't know, four or five litres of what was a lager in there. This side's my beer side. For the time being, I've got my gas set to 12 PSI. This beer won't be carbs. There was two noises and the gas going in and the refrigeration units kicked in again. So I just ran some initial beer through the line. I've got my thermometer and you can see room temp is about 22 degrees. So that's what the beer would be at as well. So I poured the first beer, and this beer isn't carbed, but that's coming out at normal speed. That's about 12 PSI there. And then I fumbled around with the thermometer, so I sped it up because you couldn't see it. <laughs> My hand was in the way. And it was about 3.8 to 4 degrees. Four that's pretty degrees. good. That's for the first pour. It's cold. So I took another two pours. So I poured another couple. This isn't cut, these three beers I pour. And they continue to come out at about three degrees. Or just under. Three. Two point. Well, yeah, it was two point something then. Or three. Now the reservoir is only set to two. When you use glycol, you can, of course you can go colder but that's coming out at three that's working well good that's room temperature down there it's probably 20 odd degrees today and it's coming out three degrees uncut and i'll pour another one just to show if it keeps up as i said earlier you'd have to test a little bit and find out what pressure you need to pour at I can feel it cold through the glass.
Uh, three degrees. So it's coming out into the glass. Oh, it's a little bit under three degrees. So that works really well. And that tap there is so cold. My taps inside don't get that cold. And that's just using water at two degrees. Of course, if you use glycol, you can set it much lower and get your beer to coming out under zero if you like. I'm not sure why you'd want it that cold, but some people do like a summer's day. Goes into your glass cold. Takes longer to warm up, I guess. There's a lot of tests and different things that are in the instructions, which I didn't go through today. Leak tests and things like that. But it's a very basic setup and it works really well. It's a beautiful looking unit. So that's about it for today. I just wanted to have a quick look at it and set it up. A big thanks goes out to Kegland for supplying the unit. As I said, this isn't a paid review. These are just my thoughts. Uh, I really like it. Weddings, festivals, parties, things like that. This is a commercial grade unit. So they ain't the cheapest thing you're ever gonna buy, but it works. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my patrons. Like and subscribe and share if you like the video. One day I'll get that right. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks, patrons. I'll see you in the next one. Ah, ah. Before I go, what I should have added is what is good about this sight gauge. You might think, why would they build a sight gauge like that? Well, it's not just a sight gauge. If you want to empty your reservoir, first you'll have to take off these blue retaining circlip things. If I can get it off, I haven't got any fingernails. There we go. They're just a retaining clip, like a locking clip. Now I'm going to get stuff everywhere here, <laughs> but it's only water this time. If I use one of these tools, or you could use a screwdriver or something, get in between there. Uh -oh. It's going to come out now, but it's how you can drain your reservoir. Oh, that was a good catch. That's very handy because these are heavy units. You don't want to have to be picking it up to drain it. I'll drain this later. <laughs> Cheers.